Good day YouTube. My name is Captain Darren and my amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. I'm glad you're here because you probably want to figure out how to set up your Anon so that you can communicate via digital, for example like FT8. Well you came to the right place. Stay tuned, I'll give you more information. Internet Did you know there is no sound card in the Anon 7000 DLE Mark III? I want to give special thanks to K1GMM. His name is Steve. And uh, I watched this video, so I'm going to leave the link above there so that uh, you can watch his video and also watch mine. But I found a, a better way maybe not better way but an alternative way to use a sound card and what I'm using this is a USB audio stereo sound adapter okay I'll leave the link in the description below so that uh, you too can purchase one of those and get a non working on FT8. So let's get to it. I know this might be a long video, but we're going to cover it as fast as I can. Welcome to my desktop. Let me show you the sound card really quick. It's on um, Amazon. Here it is. Uh, I bought um, both of them. You can see when I last ordered it. So I just had them had them in my uh, in my drawer and um, when I was watching Steve's video and I said hey I don't have a sound card you know like the M audio like he has so let me try using that Sabrent card where's the camera right there all right so I got the USB version and and it worked so look at the price um, this is a USB-C type C and the USB-A. So this one it's currently priced at $9 and with free shipping. So that's what I'm currently using here that's connected to my um, my PC and I built that PC. Now we're going to show you uh, where to download the voice meter banana. So find your favorite web browser and all you need to do is just type voice meter V O I C E and meter is spelled weird M E E T E R. There's two E's and then banana. Okay, you just click on that and here's the software. And depending on your package, I use this one here, Voice Meter 2.0.6.8. It's a zip file, so unzip it and install it in your PC. Okay, JTDX. How in the heck do you download that? You know, when I first downloaded it, I had difficulties in downloading. It wasn't so easy to navigate. Let me show you how to do it. Open Firefox. That's my favorite browser. Type in JTDX download Windows download. Source 
forge that's where you need to go okay so click on that link you see this this first word it says download don't don't click on that go straight to files Here's the latest version, JTDX version 2.2.159er. Click on that. Click on that. Here are the operating systems. We have Windows, Linux, and the Macintosh users. I'm, uh, I use Windows. Okay, so we got a 32-bit audio, 16-bit audio. I'll, I'd rather just choose the 32-bit audio. And here you go. This is where you find if your computer is 64-bit variant or Windows, select that. So you would click on this and then watch it download. So that's where you find your software for JTDX. We got two more programs to download. The uh, Virtual Serial Port Emulator. Go to your favorite web browser, Firefox, and all you need to do is just type in the uh, Virtual Serial Ports Emulator, and it's listed right there. The very first one, VSPE, and that's what I'm using. And um, I'm using the 64-bit version. So you click that and download it and you install it on your PC. The last thing I'm going to show you is the log for old man. Log for old man. Download. And... Uh, this is where you go to download your logbook. And the stable version, it's this one right here. Version 2.27.1.0. I'm not using that one because I'm having an issue with the name populating in my logs. So what I'm doing is I'm using the previous version. 2.26.0 uh, but I'll show you once I bring up my log for OM so that's it those are the software programs that we'll be using to connect the Anon to um, JTDX on FT8 okay it's really easy to set up the uh, voice meter banana or what Steve calls it, Chiquita. And Steve is K1GMM. So it's easy to set up, like I said. Go to this upper right hand corner here, it says A1. Go to your drop down, select that sound card. In my case, it's the USB audio device. Okay, it's that sound card that I purchased on Amazon. That little USB sound card. I don't need to make any kind of Connection with the, the 3.5 millimeter plug, your computer will automatically sense that. Okay, menus. Go down to your menus and look at your system settings. This is what I've got. And I'm emulating Steve's setup. So all these settings is what I followed on his steps. Okay. So you can look at that there, pause the video if you need to, and let's move on. Okay, this here, don't don't worry about that. That's my audio here, so I can record myself on the OBS. So that's it. That's everything that you need to do on Voice Meter Banana. And here, the virtual inputs, ensure that the A1 is enabled to to uh, disable it, you push the button, and then to re-enable it, you put it, push the button one more time. All right. Okay. Now let's take a look at the uh, virtual serial port emulator. 
Okay, this is what I downloaded. I have 14 days on this trial period. So once this trial period is finished, um, you have the option of purchasing it. And <laughs> there's a cost, 139.95 for the standard. But um, hey, you guys, if you have a free serial port emulator, leave it in the comments below so we can all get a free version of this. But uh, I'm showing you that I'm using this and it and it worked. No way in the heck I want to purchase that $139. But uh, anyway, let's continue on. And um, Steve, if you're watching this, send me the link where you can get that free, if it's free, uh, your virtual port emulator. This is what you get. You got this, all right? And K1GMM, I'm emulating Steve. So we we labeled it as COM5 is paired with COM6. And I labeled the that connection as called Anon 7000 DLE Mark III. So the Anon, we're going to configure that now. That's going to be COM port 5. We will be using OmniRig. OmniRig is part of the Log4OM. And when you installed it, and we're going to um, have OmniRig as COM6. So let's take a look at the Anon. When I said Anon, I meant Thetis. So let's take a look at Thetis. We're going to configure Thetis so it could communicate with... Um, JTDX and log4om. So set up, click on the audio, the drivers, I'm going to select ASIO drivers, ASIO, and then you're going to select voice meter virtual ASIO for the input and for the output, it's also the same thing, voice meter virtual ASIO. Make sure you enable the VAC1, that virtual audio cable, okay? And then click apply. The next thing we need to do is we need to configure the cat control. So we're going to select the serial network MIDI cat. All right. Disable it first. If you had it enabled, disable it. And you want to choose once you run that that emulator, the virtual COM port emulator, you will see the COM ports on the drop down. Okay, this is a CNCAO, CNCBO. That's COM zero COM. Um, I gotta play with that to see how how that works. But I went ahead and download COM zero COM. That's free, I think. And but uh, for now, we're going to set it up as COM5. Remember, the Anon is going to be COM5. And um, the baud rates, Steve K1GMM had it at 4,800 baud rates per second. And uh, I went maxed out 115,200. That's what I have selected. Parity none, data bits. Uh, eight and stop bit one and then click enable cat one apply okay very good now as part of the the data mode for ft8 if you're familiar with using jtdx or uh, I'm sorry, like uh, Sun SDR2DX or um, uh, any other digital modes, it's going to be digital upper sideband. So right here in the middle right, you're going to select that as your, your mode of operation. Okay. Currently, I'm on 10 meters 
Um, I don't have it turned on, but if you want, I can turn it on. And now you can see activity. Uh, currently on 10 meters, digital upper sideband. And uh, also here, you want to select 3 kilohertz wide. That's your bandwidth, 3 kilohertz wide. Okay. And I think that is it. So that's that's all there is to it. Uh, with regards to pure signal, don't use pure signal. Uh, I tried it, it just adds so much noise. So no pure signal. I use the noise blanker here because I got severe power line noise and uh, I leave noise reduction off. JTDX, okay. You saw that I brought up voice meter and I went to A1 and reselected my audio device, okay. Now there's movement here and movement here. There's audio being received. All right, so let me hide this. Here it is, we're on 10 meters, okay? I'm currently receiving and deciphering 10 meter FT8, and you'll see it here. My signal strength is average in the middle down here, the AGC gain, I get it maxed. It's full, 120. It's like wide open. Okay, so there's some activity there. So let's go over the setup of my configuration on JTDX. Let's go to File, go to Settings. Move it over here. Okay. Under general, you're going to populate this uh, in your call sign, your grid, grid square. Radio. All right. So Steve was using the Kenwood TS480, as he mentioned in the video. I tried to use... TCI client RX1, but I couldn't get it to work. Now at my other station where I have the Sun SDR2DX, I use TCI client and it works wonderful. So I'm not sure why it's so difficult for Anon um, to utilize TCI connectivity. So let's use the Kenwood TS-480. All right, TS-480, I selected COM6. I went to the max bar rate. Remember, I was 115,200. Default stop bits are default. Default is the stop bits, and also handshaking is default. This is COM6 for push to talk method. How do you get there to do the drop down? Well, just put it in a box. Oh no, go to DTR and then you can select it to COM6 and then put it back to CAT, computer control. All right, and then everything else is default. So you can test the CAT, CAT connection And it probably lock up my system. You see, there's there's still movement. So it tests. It takes a while. I, I'm not sure why it takes a lot longer than the Sun SDR2. But there, uh, the amp is off. Make sure I got. I'm gonna turn down the power to zero, and uh, bring up that screen again.
Okay, we're going to test the push to talk. If I transmit, I'll let you know. It's transmitting now. I heard a click. Hello, test. Hey. That, oh. Anyways, I'm looking up here. Is my transmitting audio, visual, I mean, uh, voice? So, transmit. There's connection. I got a ding dong. Because how about a walk? Not now. So click OK. It doesn't stop transmitting. So I gotta unclick the transmit MOX. All right, back to file settings. All right, so we did the Kenwood TS four eighty. Uh, good. We also want to bring up the what do they call that? Omni rig. Omni rig. O M N I. Omni rig app. All right. I'll bring that up. Where is that? Oh, here we go. This is the Omni rig app. All right. Again, emulating my idol, Steve K1 GMM. He's using the Kenwood TS2000, COM6. Um, I don't think the baud rate matters, but he's using 38,400, eight data bits, parity none, one stop bit. And I changed it from high, the request to send uh, and uh, to low. And data transmit ready is to low. And I changed the pole and the timeout. 100 and 4,000 is the timeout. Click OK. That was the Omni rig. And now here's important audio. The input audio you want to use is voice meter, auxiliary, out. Okay, and then the okay that was the input. That's why when I was when it was transmitting, you saw the the mic meter, and my voice was going out over the air, but with zero power out, so it wasn't actually putting power out. But I did see the meter moving when I was talking. So voice meter, aux output, and then for the output, it's voice meter aux input everything is mono sequencing you can look at my settings there I've made some changes you can pause the video to take a look look at it uh, transmit macros nothing to do there reporting again pause the video to take a look let's not go through all the settings And um, I'm sending this UDP to the log4om. We're going to go over that in a second. Frequencies, nothing to do there. Notifications, you can look at that. Um, I've changed my colors. You can look at my color grid here because on the default setting, sometimes that, that what is it, magenta or some fiery orange red or orange it just blows out the call sign you can't even see the call sign clearly so you can uh, look at my color settings you can change it by pushing these buttons here and then select your color palette filters nothing there schedules nothing there scheduler advance nothing there that's it Click OK. That's my settings for JTDX. You can see the activity, right? Log for old man. Let's bring that up. Log for old man. It's right here.
Remember the version? It's version 2.26.0.0. The latest version, I think, is 2.27.0, something like that. But I had an issue with this name right here populating when it was logging the the QSO. Look at that. Log 4 OMs displaying the frequency of my Thetis and JTDX. Where is my JTDX? Here it is. Where is it at? JTDX. I wanted to show you this. All right. So there it is. They're all talking together. Here's JTDX 28074. Here's log4om. And then the anon. So if I'm going to change bands, we go to 17 meters. Look at that. It all changed. I, my eyes, I only got two eyeballs. I can't look at three at the same time. <laughs> all right. I'm going back to 10 meters. So look again at JTDX, Log4OM, and Thetis. And let me know if you can see it all shift at the same time. Three, two, one, mark. <laughs> it, was, it was so fast. I had to use my peripheral vision, like when I'm flying an airplane, the peripheral vision right before you touch down you get that that um, the experience uh, of landing an airplane. You know when to flare. You pull that elevator up so you have that nice and smooth landing. I used my peripheral vision and I saw them switch at the same time. Isn't that cool? We're done with this one. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna minimize this one, and we're looking at the settings of the log for OM. So where you need to go is you need to go to settings, program configuration. Okay, I'm just going to show you the important part here. Can't interface. All right. I have mine selected to TCIP protocol and uh, I have it to auto start once I turn on or open up this software log for om under the tci this is my address and i'm using the default port 50001 okay omni rig i'm not using and like i said we're using tci protocol next under the WSJTX or JT DX I have this setting it's not checked and uh, where is that logging portion? Let me find it. Here it is. Okay. Software integration. This is what I use when a QSO is finished and uh, it takes that message and saves it in my logbook. So look at that setting here. And this is how I did it. Uh, where's the add? You put a. I want to add something. So it would be a UDP uh, port number. For example, the port number was 2237. 2237. Connection name, you label it. I'm going to label this as W 
W S J T X. This is just an example. And then the service type is JT message, JT message. And then you click the plus sign. You see it? That's how it works. Since it's the same port, I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. So that's it. This is, and it tells you right here, WSJTX, the default port is 2237. And I think I covered it all here. Okay, and then you click save and apply. Okay, when you're doing FT8, the voice meter banana needs to be running. So you see there's audio here, audio here. And we got the uh, USB audio device connected. I'm just going to miniaturize that. Let me hide my camera. Fetus is running. We're on 15 meters. And um, on the upper right is JTDX. Bottom is the uh, log for old man. Okay. All right, then my receive is kind of high, so you just take your automatic gain control, just scroll it back till you bring this down somewhere about 100, 110 in the middle range. Okay. Still too hot. 44. Thirty-nine. Right about there is fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, here in the waterfall, we have a TV that puts out interference. So my mother's watching TV right now. So you're going to see these vertical lines here. That's just noise. All right, let me zoom in. Okay, we have uh, 15 meters. Pure signals turned off. I am tuned SWR is 1.04 and uh, amplifier is on. Let's call CQ. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Bring this down. All right. Calling CQ now. Um, 190 watts going out from the PAL star. It's indicating 200 watts. SWR 1.04. been spotted by these people here's my signal I just got audio I'm seeing my audio going out too as I'm talking Weird. I gotta, I gotta shut something down. Okay. You see my audio? Audio. N4 VFR. Okay. I gotta stop that. How about this? Delete it. I just removed that selection. One, two, three. All right. So. Now I, I just turned it off and uh, it's not being uh, broadcast. That was funny. I, so what, no one wants to come back to me. Nobody wants to come out and play. Oh, here we go. K5KIP. 
pushing uh, I'm pushing 199 watts right now and uh, he copies me as a plus one and I copied him as a minus 15 k5 kip watch his call sign come down here at the bottom once we get a 73. Okay, we got a 73, and then look at the bottom. His name just populated. K5KIP. 73s. Have a great day. All right, sweet. One more test. I'm going to go to 20. No, not 20 meters. Let's go to 10 meters. Um, change this to 10 meters. You see that all the frequencies changed. 28074. Bring back my AGC. Okay. Bring down my power. I'm using an amplifier. All right, I think we're all set up. I'm sending CQ now. Okay, 107 watts. I'm bumping up the power. 225 watts right there. 225 watts. SWR is 1.12. Again, the moto operation, you look here, it's a digital upper side band on a 10 meter band, and we're three kilohertz wide. The pure signal is not on. I've been spotted. You see this here because remember I'm using the older version of of the um, log for old man, log for old man. So that's the latest version right there. Two hundred twenty-three watts, one point oh five SWR. I mean, this guy here, PU2OYT, he's a minus six. Let's try to make contact with this guy, PY2NE. I just double clicked on his nail, on his call. PYU, I'm sorry, PY2NE. Have I worked him before? Back in uh, 2022, FT8 on 10 meters. I'm gonna look at this here, the meters under AGC or ALC so when I transmit you'll see the ALC oh, there's Mike all right we're coming back my ALC comes all the way up to 0 dB you see it right there Once we have a successful QSO, his call sign will be populated right here. There it is. 73. That's a lot we covered. I hope you were able to uh, 
follow along and perhaps you know you got to pause the video a few times to just verify the settings so you can get the uh, the correct configuration this is how i do it with my pc on on and using those programs to get fta to work and the thing about the uh, the virtual port emulator uh, if you have a recommendation of a, of a free version of one uh, hit me up on the uh, comments below uh, and share it with everybody because I am not going to pay for $139 for that license to use as an emulator. Uh, I'll figure out how to use COM, Zero COM and get that to work. Good luck to your setup guys. My name is Captain Darren. My call sign is N4VFR. I hope you enjoyed my videos on how to set up the FT8 on your Anon. 73s and have a great day.